In the previous section, we passed FPGA items to SubVIs. By the end of this module, you will be able to test FPGA SubVIs. When you're testing FPGA SubVIs, you can test them as if they were top-level VIs. So, for example, uh, once I've created a SubVI, what I can do is I can execute it on the development computer and make sure all the functionality is correct. And then after that, if it makes sense to, I can also execute that SubVI on an FPGA target to make sure it works on the FPGA. After I've confirmed that, I can go ahead and put my SubVI into my calling VI, and then I can test that calling VI on the development computer just to make sure everything's working there, and then after that I can also execute that whole thing on the FPGA target. Okay, so now if you have time, go ahead and do exercise 10.1, and here we'll create an FPGA SubVI, and then we'll put it into a main VI, and then we can do some testing on it as well. So for now, I'm going to open up the solution and go through it with you. Okay, so let's take a look at the exercise 10.1 solution. So in this, um, in this exercise, you're going to build a sub-VI, and you're going to use it on a main VI. And the sub-VI is going to use some FPGA I.O. as well. So let's open this up. Notice we have an analog input FPGA I.O. node, also a digital output I.O. node, and both of these are going to be accessible from our main VI. Okay, We have an AI scan period, a threshold, and we're going to see what the AI value is, and we're going to see if that threshold was reached. So let's take a look at the block diagram. So in the block diagram, notice that we've got some reusable code. Uh, we have a loop timer here, so there's no while loop here. Uh, the reason why is because in this application, we're going to put the while loop in the main VI, the top level VI. Okay, so here we have a loop timer. We're going to be able to tell it what loop rate to, to run at. So that's our AI scan period. And then we're going to take a look at the analog input. We're going to extract the I.O. from that. We're going to compare it and get the uh, see whether the threshold was breached yet. We're going to output uh, whether the threshold was reached to an indicator. And we're also going to output that result to a digital output which is specified by this FPGA I.O. control. Okay? So because we have this as a sub-VI, we can reuse it, and we can reuse it with, uh, with, with several different digital output and analog input channels. So let me close this. The other thing I want to show you real quick is if we look at the uh, VI properties, we'll see that the this, this sub-VI kept the default setting for re-entrancy. So if we go to VI properties, and go to the execution category. So notice that we're going to the execution category here. Notice that reentrancy is on. Okay. So if I wanted to make this non-reentrant for some reason, then I can click on the non-reentrant execution item here. But I'm going to leave it in this case as reentrant because I do want it to be able to run in parallel with other instances of the sub VI. So I'm going to just cancel out of here. Now let's go ahead and close this. And let's go to our main VI. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and open up our sub-VI again. Uh, notice that right now I've got my FPGA target here, and it's going to be executing on a dev computer. Okay, so I can go ahead and run this. I probably won't be able to test out the scan period really well, but I can test the threshold and the um, AI. So let's see if this logic works. So it looks like our output that we got, our simulated I.O. from our analog input channel was 29361 which is greater than zero, so threshold reach is, is going to be true. Okay, let me run it one more time. And um, if, you're, if you're creating a sub-VI, you can run it a couple times and make sure uh, that in the simulated environment, everything's working okay. So look, we have a threshold of zero. We have something that is below zero, negative 16471, and threshold reached is off. Okay, so um, for that quick test, it looks like everything's working all right. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. So now let's go to our main VI. So notice we've got that sub VI here several times, and because it's reentrant, it'll be executing in parallel um, on the hardware. Okay. So notice that I've created an analog input channel zero and digital output channel zero, and then here we've got channel one for each of them and channel two for each of them. So each of them will be running at their own scan period. Every each one of them is going to have its uh, separate maximum limit or threshold. And then we're going to have these indicators for each one, indicating the analog input value and whether it reached the threshold or not. Okay? And we have a false going here, so all three loops are going to be running indefinitely. 
So before we do any compiling, of course, we want to make sure everything is working in our simulated environment, right? Because here we have our debugging tools and all that. So let's go ahead and run this. So I'm going to put a scan period here. Notice that it's in microseconds. Um, I'm going to make this one second. Okay. And I'm going to put a maximum limit of zero. So in this case, because this is an I-16, it's going to go from about negative 32,000 all the way up to positive 32,000 something. So here I'm going to um, make this one two seconds. And I'm going to make this one three seconds. And I'm not going to make the maximum limit zero here and the maximum limit here. So in this simulation, about half the time, it'll cross the threshold. So let's go ahead and run this. So notice that each of these are updating at different rates. Okay, this one is updating every second. This one is updating every two seconds. And this one is updating every three seconds. And notice that when this value is positive, that's going to go true. Okay, so again, now that we've verified everything is working in our simulation environment, I can go ahead and stop this. And then at this point, I can go ahead, and if I had my FPGA hardware installed, I could right-click, go to here, execute BI on FPGA target, and then I could run this and compile it and test it on our actual hardware. Okay, let's go through the discussion questions now. So the first one. If you needed to monitor additional analog input channels and control additional DIO lines, how would you change your code? So remember, in this exercise, uh, we already had that, that logic nicely encapsulated inside a sub-BI. So in this case, uh, we can reuse that code very easily. We can just drop down another while loop and put the sub-BI in there and then wire up its inputs and controls. Okay, let's do the second question now. How would the behavior of this application change if you change the sub-VI from re-entrant to non-re-entrant? Well, in this case, right now it's re-entrant, so everything is going to happen in parallel on the hardware. If we were to change that to non-re-entrant, that would no longer be the case. Um, if, if it was non-re-entrant, then each call to that sub-VI would have to wait until the previous call to that sub-VI has ended instead of executing in parallel. Now you can test FPGA sub-VIs. Next, we will describe the purpose of a host VI and the basics of creating a host VI.